Hey guys, Ralph here, and welcome to True Power on this magnificent Monday here in Connecticut. January 17th, Martin Luther King Day. Uh, a day that has grown over the years, as well it should, into quite a day of reflection and holiday, of course, in this country. Uh, in tribute to the great, the great Martin Luther King. Um, and I have a couple musings, as I put on the thumbnail, that you might find interesting that uh, don't really connect me in the traditional sense of Martin Luther King, but uh, they are a little bit different, so you might get a kick out of them. Uh, number one, my father, who is no longer with us, uh, was a professional singer around Boston and had a bachelor's degree in music education from New England Conservatory as well as a master's degree in education administration from Boston University. Very, very bright man. And um, <clears throat> when he was at Boston University, there was another singer there named, little known at the time, named Cloretta Scott King, who was quite a, uh, an accomplished singer. My father said she had an absolutely beautiful voice. Um, and they both, my father and Cloretta Scott King, both had the same voice teacher. I believe his name was Frederick Yeager. I'm not sure. I know my father studied with him at some point. Maybe it wasn't the same teacher they had in common, but I believe it was Frederick Yeager. And this teacher, Frederick Yeager, whoever it may be, as was his want, always ran over on lessons. He was always way behind on lessons. If he had an hour lesson, he was going an hour 10, an hour 15, and a half hour lesson, so be it. Never, never on time. So outside his studio was a big, um, was a big wooden bench that my father and Cloretta Scott King would spend quite a bit of time <laughs> kibitzing over the years that he was at Boston, they were both at Boston University, and, um, you know, moaning and groaning about Yagel, he's never on time, blah, 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 how are you, I, you know, and she would constantly talk about what her husband was doing and how she missed her husband because he was on the road a lot and all that sort of thing. But also, um, when it came time for graduation at the commencement, who was the keynote speaker? Martin Luther King. So, that was kind of cool. My mother went, and um, she was eight months pregnant with my brother, my younger brother at the time, and um, so sick. It was in, uh, you know, spring slash summer in Boston. It was ungodly hot. Um, but Martin Luther King gave an absolutely scintillating uh, keynote address that my mother remembers to this day. It certainly was that I had a dream, but it was, well, if you've ever heard the great orator Martin Luther King speak, it was just always, always something to take up and listen to. Now, the second one has to do with a specific speech in the uh, Washington Plaza in front of millions of people, the I Have a Dream speech. And one of the uh, principals that I worked for, his name was Rodney Bass. He was a very, very learned man, very, very bright, and an enormous African-American man. He was about 6'6". He played basketball at UConn. Um, and this was in Connecticut, where I was teaching. Uh, he was played basketball at UConn on scholarship. He was a great athlete and a um, great singer, believe it or not. He had an absolutely wonderful basso voice. But he was also a very, on top of being a uh, public school administrator, principal, he was also a very, very accomplished Baptist preacher. And he had his own church uh, in Stanford. I believe, I'm sure he's still with us. He's not much older than me. I believe he lives down in Atlanta. I'm not sure if he's still preaching. I'm sure he is to some degree. In, in a, part-time capacity at least if he doesn't have his own, you know, congregation. But anyway, he was very, very accomplished and well-known and constantly, you know, taking time out of the 
day here, a day there, to be off at different functions, preaching. And he, he was an incredible preacher, a oh, man. He would mesmerize, mesmerize a auditorium full of inner school, inner city teenagers with his, you know, talks at assemblies and stuff like this. He, he was a very, very talented orator. Okay. Very, very talented. Anyway, because he was so accomplished, he ran with some of the great orators of the time. Um, Al Sharpton was one of his buddies, and he was very, very close to the kings. He knew uh, Martin Luther King before Martin Luther King died, uh, but he was very close with Claretta Scott King and even closer to Claretta Scott King's daughter. I'm not sure what her name is. But Claretta Scott King was constantly up talking at Rodney's congregation. And Claretta Scott King's daughter came several times to the middle school where I was working and talked to the kids, you know, with big... Um, pictures about her father and, you know, uh, background uh, videos about her father. It's very, very, I mean, she was a talented kid, too. And her brother, I believe, is, is an ordained minister and does very well, too. Anyway, now here's the thing. Here's the story, and you're going to like this story. I love this story. But um, Rodney and I both had cafeteria duty, and we start talking, blah, 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 blah. And it was about Martin Luther King Day. It might have been Martin Luther King Day. And Rodney started talking about him. And he said, what was kind of funny after all these years is the specific I have a dream speech that is so iconic and etched in all our brains throughout, you know, all Americans. He actually did that a minimum 10 times before the big one we see at the Washington Plaza in front of millions of people. That was not the first time he did the speech. Not by a long shot. He did it many times prior to that, where it got to the point where the people that were working with him and handling him and traveling with him and all this sort of, were kind of getting sick of it. <laughs> Believe it or not, they had heard it enough. I had a dream, yeah, 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 yada, yada, yada. I mean, really, that's what was the pervading thought. Now, when he came to the actual day of this event that we all know, we all see all day today in Washington, he had another speech planned. And five, eight, ten minutes into the brand new speech, done specifically for that day and whatnot, it was bombing terribly. Bombing terribly. No hallelujahs between, you know, pauses and all this sort of stuff. So what he did was he stopped and paused in the middle. And all his hammers go, oh no, not the I have a dream stuff again. Really? Okay, we got it right. And sure enough, he morphed right into the I have a dream speech and the rest is history. He just mesmerized the world with that speech. But it was a source of angst for the people that were with him. Yeah, yeah, we got it. We heard it before, right? Yeah, we, yeah, Martin, we, we, we have a dream. Okay. So it was, I, I find that absolutely hilarious. That it wasn't supposed to be meant for that day. It was old news by the time it got to that day. But certainly enough, the content of that speech as the content of our character and all that sort of stuff will, will live forever. And it's interesting because just as I, he's telling that speech, a young man, uh, an African-American man, walked by with baggy jeans down below his butt and headphones in and he's bopping and rapping and all this sort of stuff. And I said, Mr. Bass, I said, tell me, do you think if Martin Luther King, this is about 15 years ago, do you think if Martin Luther King were alive today, he would be happy with what's going on in the world? Rodney didn't hesitate. He said, nope, he wouldn't like this at all. Interesting stuff. But anyway, guys, have a great day. And I will try, I have a busy day myself, personally with the family and all, but uh, I'll try to get a health and fitness and a trumpet uh, video up later. 
Okay, enjoy the day, and we will eat and drink your fruits and vegetables and live your life with true power, not the fake stuff, true power. Love you all. Thank you.